Catherine Schermacher and I'm really pleased today to be speaking to Lucy Creamer. Now I want to speak to Lucy about the topic of dealing with breaks from climbing. Now the reason I wanted to speak to Lucy in particular is because through her 15 year professional climbing career she had a lot of time off from climbing and she had a lot of accidents and she's broken five bones, crushed two vertebrae and had a shoulder operation. And um, so she's dealt with a lot more than most. Now, the other thing that I know about Lucy is she's very philosophical. Um, she's philosophical in life and in climbing. And it, that leads me on to my first question because some of these accidents and these breaks happened when she was climbing at her best, when she was at the top of her game. And so they weren't wanted. But what I want to know, Lucy, um, did these breaks, well, the breaks, the time off and the breaks, did they make you more philosophical or do you think you were philosophical anyway? Ooh, um, that's a good question. Um, well, my, my breakages started quite early in my climbing career. So as in not when I was a professional climber, but, you know, a couple of years after I started climbing. So I, you know, I've had breakages and breaks from climbing for, for many, for, for 25 years or so. So I suppose I learned early on how to deal with that. Um, I think it's like chicken or the egg, isn't it? I think, I think from what you said in your introduction about me being relatively philosophical, philosophical person, can't even say it. I think that is true. And so that probably helped. Um, it's tricky because, you know, I can't, I'm not going to lie and say, oh yeah, it was really easy. I just, I had all these breakages and swanned about enjoying life while I couldn't climb. It wasn't quite as easy as that. Well, how but, did you manage it? How did you manage to frame these, this, the, when, when, you know, you come to terms and you think, okay, this has happened to my body. This is what happened. How would you go about framing what had happened? Um, I think... I'm relatively good at taking things on at face value and looking at them in a day-to-day -day manner. Um, so I never sort of, I didn't, I tried not to regret what had happened because what's the point? It's happened and I can't unbreak my leg or whatever it was. Um, and I suppose, especially with a break, you know it's going to get better at some point. You know your body is going to heal okay you're going to lose x amount of fitness power whatever it is but you know that's not insurmountable you can get it back and it can be frustrating especially you know the first probably the first few times or maybe i can think of maybe one time when when i when it happened i was you know climbing incredibly well and then had to stop um and you just feel like you're starting at square one again. But, you know, obviously you're not, you know, your brain, uh, your brain, sorry, your muscles have memory. Um, you get back into it a lot quicker than you think you're going to. So having been through the process numerous times, I learned that it was never as bad as I thought it was going to be. And I'm quite lucky in that I have interests outside of climbing. So it wasn't that my whole world was suddenly empty and blank, which I think is very important because obviously if you do lose that one thing that is your everything, you can feel completely bereft and, you know, it can have all sorts of mental health um, implications. So I think having interests outside of climbing is really important, if only for that one reason that when you can't climb, what are you going to do? What are you going to focus on? So, um, so, yeah. so how did you use your time then? So obviously you found you, you got lots of interest, other interests doing other things, but what did you do for your body for, to maintain anything? Did you just think, okay, right, I'm just going to have a break now. 
or did, if it was a lower limb injury, were you doing upper limb stuff or did you, you know, how, what, how did you, what did you do with your time in terms of the physical aspect? Yeah, so I think it varied. It would obviously depend on the injury because I've broken both my wrists, both, both my lower limbs at, at different times. So obviously, depending on what you've injured will depend on what you can then, what you've got left to actually use. Um, I am a very physical person, you know, I'm an exerciser. Yes, I admit it. Um, so I, you know, I would always, I, I never put too much pressure on myself because um, I don't work very well like that. I learned that in my sort of early twenties that if I set goals and put loads of pressure on myself, it becomes too overwhelming and you know if I didn't do that list of things I set myself I'd feel really bad about myself and you know it would all kind of plummet downwards so I've learned that I am self-motivated and I don't need to make a big list to make myself do stuff and you know even if I go through a few days or even a week or so where I'm not feeling motivated you know that's life and it will come back you just have to accept that you can't be that uber you know sight person all the time so i would just do a mixture of I, i'm not very good at staying within um climbing type stuff when i'm injured from climbing i find it quite difficult to feel that connection somehow some people are very different they like staying within the climbing world and doing numerous fingerboard sessions and you know whatever it is you know very specific climbing stuff whereas i i just quite liked doing you know obviously if i could do pull-ups i would do some pull-ups now and then and try and keep my upper body strong by doing bicep curls and you know just various weights that i've got at home and press-ups and stuff just general things to keep a bit of tone and fitness and you know, in terms, I was, when I've been on crutches, you know, going dog walking on crutches is, is quite challenging. And I'd go for big, long walks on crutches with two crazy dogs. And, you know, just doing that keeps you fit, I can tell you. <laughs> um, and, you know, I mean, running, I probably couldn't go running when I've had any injuries because it would be too painful if it was an upper, upper limb bong, bouncing about. Um, but in terms, yeah, so physically, you know, I just try and tick over and, and not go crazy with it. But that's, you know, that's not everybody's way. Some people like. Yeah, I mean, what I know from you as well is you're really good at feeling into what your motivation is actually telling you. You don't, from the outside, it looks like you've got a good handle on the should thing. Should I, should I be fingerboarding yes or no should I do some yoga today yes or no it is that am I right in that or is there an internal battle or are you quite good at going no I'm very clear um I think I would be lying to myself if I said there wasn't an internal battle at times you know I am relatively driven and I do like to get to the end of the day and think I've achieved something physically if nothing else you know um but it, that doesn't happen have to happen every day especially if i've got some horrendous injury um but yeah also i i can i think you're right i can accept if um you know it doesn't happen i know from experience it will happen at a later date or it will happen at some point i don't need to get too worried that i'm I'm never going to be motivated again, or I'll never be able to climb again because it just seems to happen. You know, once I can get back into it, you know, and I don't go too manic with it as well when I get back into it, which I think helps, you know, I just sort of allow myself to gradually get back into it, which stops, you know, hopefully cuts down on soft tissue injury and stuff like that. Um, Cause it's easy to get the muscles strong again quite quickly but then all the tendons and ligaments if it's been a long break they take a lot longer so you've got to be quite careful on that front anyway when you're coming back from a break so as a professional climber you did have a lot of pressure on yourself because it was your you know you had sponsorship so it yeah to sort of it's interesting that you managed to accept that pressure and not pile any more pressure on 
um, how easy was that for you to do? Well, I don't know. In some ways, I suppose being a professional climber, it's easier because you've got more time on your hands. Obviously, if you're working full time and you're trying to climb as well as you can, which I know many climbers are trying to do, yeah, all their spare time, most of their spare time is spent either training or going climbing and it, it takes up most of your life um so you know if you are injured in that scenario it, it i can see how that would be quite hard to deal with so as a professional climber you know i had the luxury of time and so i for me it just didn't feel i, I didn't have to feel as desperate about it somehow it was easier that, to that's interesting that you say that because um looking on you would think oh my god i mean ev everybody's so different but yeah i guess for you and maybe you had that thing in your 20s that taught you quite early on that said you you if you do put pressure on yourself in certain ways it's not good for you so you learnt. um Mm. But I mean, I know for myself, I've always found breaks really difficult to manage. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I can't say it's been plain sailing the whole time, but I suppose I just understand somehow that, um, you know, I'm having a break. I didn't really want it, but um, my world isn't going to come crashing down. And, you know, there have been times where, when it has been difficult and I've probably got a bit depressed or whatever. But uh, generally, you know, I just learned and I know now that I will get back into climbing. I am able to get back to where I was, you know, maybe not at this precise moment now because I'm a lot older, you know, things are different. But, you know, but back in the day, up until, you know, really uh, 40s, really early 40s, you know. Um, so it's kind of what's why what's what's the worry sort of thing but if you've got limited time then i understand you feel like gosh i've just put in two years of training and it's all gone now i've broken this or i've ruptured that or whatever it is but so yeah i get that but it kind of isn't all gone you will get it back and i think we focus too much on we focus too much on strength and power and all that kind of thing and it really does depend on what your goals are, what you actually want to achieve. If you are trying to climb the hardest boulder problem in the world, then yeah, you know, be pretty gutting to have six months off. But you know, if you're trying to climb the best E3 in Pembroke, then it's not really gonna affect it that much. <laughs> hey, that's absolutely fantastic, Lucy. Thank you so much. No worries. <laughs>